Okay, how do you come up with Hattie? Committed virgin till 22, and a committed slut from 55 on. I'm out there. I'm fucking. I love it. I think it's great. But ultimately, I still want my man. First question is, how are you feeling right now? Excited. Being in front of the camera is one thing if you're having a snapshot. But being in front of a camera that's going to speak to many people is another matter. It's just an amazing gift. I'm so privileged. <laughs> so can you talk about what your style says about you? People will say to me, you're a fashionista. I don't follow fashion. I wear what my body and my being tells me to wear. So what I'm wearing are things that I found. So they are not only representative of me, but they're me. And it created the word which I love, authentic. I'm like fucking authentic. Dressed, undressed, sleeping, sucking. It's like Hattie, <laughs> she's there. She's fully there. I was looking for her a long time. I found her in a thrift shop. <laughs> she wasn't too worn out, and I, I got her. <laughs> Has your style changed with age, and if so, in what ways? Being a cougar or an older woman who fucks young guys or fucks all together, there's all sorts of stereotypes that go along with being old, and most of them are anti-sexual. And so, as you would imagine, I just used all those stereotypes and did the opposite. Again, it goes back to authenticity. Who am I? What am I communicating? I'm communicating freedom. What are assumptions that people make about you based on how you look and appear? People have very positive reactions. Nobody has negative reactions to me. You know who does? Older men. Their dicks don't get hard, and they want to find women who get their dicks hard, and they assume an older woman can't get their dick hard. And I'm not interested in, in giving them proof. If I went to a bar mitzvah, a family thing, I might not allow my breasts to come out of my dress. In fact, I have bought clothing in a thrift shop so that my, I don't have massive cleavage. And then I go to the event, and then I give the dress back to the thrift shop. Most people like the idea that I'm having sex, mostly because of how I look. Now, if I looked like a typical 80-something-year-old, maybe people would say, who would fuck that wrinkled mass? Other people my age say, how to get out of my face? Been there, done that. They don't have the feelings anymore. They have memories, lost memories of youth, all sorts of unfulfilled dreams. People are allowed to love babies with their vomit and with their smelly diapers, but they're not allowed to love themselves in the same way. Now, I'm not saying you should have a smelly diaper, but make sure that you do what you need to feel good. When did you become in touch with your sexuality in such a like potent way? Was there ever a time that you weren't? I became in touch with my sexuality, and I mean in touch. Three years old, playing with it. Felt good. You started playing with yourself at three years old? My father, take that pillow out from between your legs, Hattie. <laughs> I played with myself, and I had orgasms, and I remember them. I remember climbing on poles and then grabbing my legs together and holding it there. Hattie, keep climbing! <laughs> I didn't know that orgasms had anything to do with sex. I was a virgin until I was 22, girls. So what did I know about a dick coming inside me? I just knew <laughs> that I'd have a tickle, pull my legs together, and have one orgasm after another in Carnegie Hall in the seat. <laughs> <laughs> How did you express this then? And like. Did you have anyone to talk to, or like, what, what was your relationship with the world? It's such a different era, honey. I'm in my 80s. If you want to get laid, you got married. If a bra strap showed, you were badly dressed. So were you like modestly dressed back then? Were you? No. 
or when were you looking for marriage? Were you looking for your husband? Marriage. Did you lose your virginity to your husband or what happened? Pretty much. I had one guy because my man that I married said, I don't want a virgin. So I asked my friend Ralph, my man I have to marry doesn't want me to be a virgin. Would you take care of? He said, sure. And then I got married and we had sex continuously, twice a day, sometimes three times, for 25 years. Jack was always the star of our relationship. That was good. And the dynamic of me as a mother, a wife and mother, changed. I became a therapist. So I created movement therapy, and he was disgusted by my putting myself out there as something special or somebody special. And he just blurted out one night, I'm divorcing your mother. So I left. Then the ads started for the guys. In those days, there was no internet. So in the newspaper, it said that I'm looking for a supremely sexual man under 35. I was 55. And interesting enough, I never really figured it out totally, my obsession with young men. Dr. Phil said to me, why are you doing this? I said, I think I wanted to go back to before I was married and start a love life again. What is your biggest struggle right now in your life? My anguish at being alone. The more famous I become and the more I give of myself, which I love to do, the more I want something to hold, and the finer and kinder I am as a human being. I want to share that with a man and have him, we partake of each other's humanity. All of the um, relationships that you've been having from 55 on, all of the exploration, like, have any of them been serious relationships? Or yeah, like the first one wasn't serious, it was fun. But another one was a guitarist. He had a girlfriend that he said he broke up with her, and she was traveling with a, a company doing hair or some kind of musical. One day I'm living in his apartment and I hear on his machine, I miss you so much, I'm coming home, I can't wait to see you. So he was in Canada, he calls me, he was performing. I said, I don't think she knows you broke up with her. So he said, what should I do? I said, well, you see her, make love, and make your decision. So he sees her. Then I go see him, and I know he's given up on me. The emotional anguish was so horrid that I went to a domination parlor. My friend owned it. I asked her for a room, and I asked a friend of mine to whip me, hoping that the physical pain could help me overcome the emotional pain. So I with living under the delusion, and maybe just because I enjoy sucking so much that I didn't want to face my deeper need. I just put ads in and fucked, put ads in and fucked. And the few times that the love affair did not materialize, horrible, beyond hard. Now, do you feel like you can just have like sex without wanting more? I always want more. But I made up a word, and I made up the word heartectomy. The heartectomy is I have to say to myself, you may never see him again. Enjoy the love you may feel. It will not be capped off with a marriage proposal. So he may not ever come again, so to speak. <laughs> he may never come again. But it turned out that I didn't even want to just fucking be okay with it. Are you, like, stopping casually having sex? Yes, until so you find I'm stopping casual sex, and I, for the first time, went to something called Our Time, which is for older people. This guy picks up on me. We've been writing back and forth. I mean, like six times back and forth already. You're excited? I'm excited, but he's 58. We'll see. I see. Earrings? Someone has to help me with the necklace. <laughs> Uh, and so at the end of the day, like, what do you feel like being a self-proclaimed slut and all the sex is so empowering, but on the other hand, it's like you haven't gotten the deeper thing you need. So how are you reckoning with those two forces? I can't reckon with it. I have to admit that I am not beyond anguish. I'm not beyond depression. I am faced with them daily.
and I go about my business because I can't be paralyzed. So I swim and I go to MoMA and I have dinner with friends and I do things, but it's bad to have this amount of love, passion, contribution, care, kindness, to have that much and not have a man to give it to or share it with, that's not okay with me. If I weren't gifted with this extraordinary capacity for love, if I didn't feel it this powerfully, I wouldn't feel the lack of it that powerfully. But I also know that if I had it, all that would come alive. I want it to come alive. Come on, I'm 86, I'm, I'm more than ready. <laughs> when do you feel the most vulnerable? I feel vulnerable right now because the questions you're asking go very deeply into my being and that response has a vulnerable softness you are eliciting the deepest truth I can share, and I thank you. <laughs> thank you for going deep. When else might you feel vulnerable outside of this room? <laughs> when, I see, when I see my credit card usage, <laughs> very vulnerable. When am I going to pay this off before the interest takes over? <laughs> <laughs> When do you feel the most beautiful? Well, I feel most beautiful when I'm being most real, most kind, most good. If I'm looking at someone and I see that how I speak to them matters, I feel beautiful for that. And how do you feel about like your wrinkles? Like, do you find them beautiful? Do you feel- What wrinkles? <laughs> <laughs> I look and I ask myself, do these wrinkles really matter to me? They don't. What matters to me is this muscle, these muscles. Can we see how flexible you are? <laughs> yeah. 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 Amazing. You never entertained Botox, plastic surgery, anything like that? Never. I don't want to insult my body. It has to be a way to honor what time takes and what time gives. And that's what I live with. Why in your body, in your skin, in your journey, in you, why is it a good place to be? It feels like a car, like it's a vehicle taking me somewhere because so much on the inside is out of my control. It's like a mechanism that's going on on its own. It doesn't exactly feel like I own it. It's almost like my body owns me because it's so powerful in what it does to keep a human being alive. How do you feel? Uh, cool. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I feel brave. Takes a long time to, to stop hiding. Because what you're hiding is who you are. Just me. Just me. That was so beautiful. And amazing. You like just are so incredible. I'm gonna give you a hug. Thank you so much. That was so beautiful. Really, really, really great.